In the town of Yankuk lives the great Chinese magician, Dr. Fu Ling, now retired. He has been making plans for a benefit entertainment for the troops stationed nearby. April and Big Stoop, the huge Chinese giant who can't talk, went to Fu Ling's house to talk about the benefit show. There, the great doctor of magic demonstrated his color pencil, which he generously gave to Big Stoop. In today's transcribed adventure, we learn what strange fate befalls Fu Ling and April. So stand by. Terry and the Pirates is brought to you by the makers of Libby's Tomato Juice, one of Libby's hundred famous foods. These are strenuous days we're living through right now, times that demand every ounce of strength we have. And it's our duty as good Americans to give all we have, keep ourselves fit to meet every challenge. To do that, we must eat wisely. And that's one reason why I urge you to get Libby's Tomato Juice. You see, Libby's Tomato Juice is more than a marvelous refresher. It's a valuable food drink, rich in vitamins. On all sides, you hear about the importance of vitamin C and vitamin A. Well, Libby's Tomato Juice is an excellent source of both. And it provides vitamins B1 and vitamin G as well. For flavor, food values, it's hard to beat Libby's Tomato Juice. And Libby packs many other delicious foods that have a whole lot to contribute. Food authorities say we should eat fruits daily. Libby brings you peaches, pears, fruit cocktail, plums, lots of marvelous tasting fruits. And meats, too. And vegetables. Your mother can be sure of getting perfectly delicious things to eat whenever she buys a food that's labeled Libby's. So ask her to get the drink that's tops for flavor. Libby's tomato juice. And other Libby's foods as well. Now, don't forget that name, Libby's, L-I-B-B-Y-S. And now, Terry and the Pirates. While April was talking with Dr. Fu Ling, the magician, other things happened back at Yang Cook Hotel. Terry and Pat Ryan received a secret visit from the notorious dragon lady. She said she was now working for the Chinese government. She explained also that there were at least two men in the town who would gladly see her destroyed. One was the Baron de Plexus, and the other, Dr. Fu Ling. When she mentioned his name, Pat Ryan was suddenly alarmed. Dr. Fu Ling? You mean the Chinese magician? Huh? So you know him? No, I don't know him, and I don't think Terry does. I've heard the name before, Pat. Well, what are you so excited about? Well, I know Dr. Fu Ling is in town. April was up here to tell me about him. He's supposed to stage some kind of an entertainment for the soldiers and sailors. And this hotel, too. Well, suppose he is. What about it? But April and Big Stoop have gone to visit him. He lives in a house somewhere across town. She will not be harmed. But you said Dr. Fooling was a dangerous person. No, I did not say that. I said he would be glad to see me out of the way. That is all. Well, then? So far as I know, Dr. Fooling should be a friend of yours. He is one of the heads of the Chinese Army Intelligence Department. Even though he is the world's greatest magician, he is secretly working hand in glove with the Chinese government. Well, if you're working for the Chinese government, too, what's the answer? Why should he be against you? Terry Lee, the things I have done in the past do not recommend me very highly to the doctor. He will never trust me. But maybe we can convince him that all of us should work together for the common good. The dragon lady is not so optimistic. It looks to me like you're going to have trouble doing your bit in this war. You have more enemies on this side of the fence than you have on the other. True words, Mr. Ryan, but do not forget. I have my own organization. My men will follow my orders. They will do as I say. What do you mean by that? I believe I shall soon be able to protect myself against Dr. Fooling and his magic. Well, don't be too sure. You're not able to protect yourself against the bullets of those men who were hired by Baron de Plexus to kill you. That is because I came to Yankuk alone. I was foolish enough to believe that because I was now working for the Chinese government, I would be safe. I found out differently, as well you know, Terry Lee. Now I have sent for my men. They are in this town tonight. As for the doctor magician, as for Baron de Plexus or Big Stoop or anyone else, I believe I have adequate protection. Well, right now I'm kind of worried about April. She ought to be back by this. While Terry and Pat talked with the dragon lady, 
Let us swing across town to the home of Dr. Fu Ling. He has just finished a remarkable demonstration of his marvelous rainbow pencil, a wonder color pencil which he has given to Big Soup. Here you are, my giant friend. Very soon I shall instruct you in all the secrets of this color pencil. I can hardly wait till Big Soup is able to use it. He can try it right now. Uh, come here, my friend. Use the pencil on this pad of white paper. Yeah, yeah. By using the flat side of the pencil, you will be able to make many fantastic drawings. Go right ahead, my friend, and let us see what you can do. Gracious, that tricky four-color pencil is really wonderful. But we ought to have a special name for each color. <laughs> Very well, Miss Ken. <laughs> what would you like to name the color? Well, I'd like to call one of them Dragon Lady Red. Excellent. It is a very brilliant, dangerous color, this red. And Dragon Lady is a perfect name for it. And what about the blue color which comes from this same pencil? Well, a friend of mine, her name's Burma. She doesn't live in this town. But I'd like to call this color Burma Blue. Of course, that doesn't mean anything to you, Dr. Fooling. But I'm sure Big Steve and the others would understand why I picked her name. Yeah. And I suppose you would like to call this third primary color uh, Chinese yellow? Oh, I think that's cute. And for all the Chinese shirt figure on this someplace. I mean, you invented the pencil, and you gave it to Big Stoop, and you're both Chinese. So why not call it Chinese yellow? And might I make a suggestion about the lovely green color in this rainbow pencil? Might I suggest we call it April green? Oh, I think that's perfectly blacky. April green. Do you hear that, Sue? The color and the pencil all have names. Dragon Lady Red, Thermal Blue, Chinese Yellow, and April Green. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see what you've drawn, Super. Why, he's drawn a Chinese dragon. And all the colors of the rainbow are in it. There is really no end to the variety of things that can be done with this pencil. And is this the only one in the world, this pencil? Well, at the moment, I cannot reveal our practice, King. I feel kind of like we've been imposing on you, Doctor. Big Steve and I came here to talk about the show you're putting on at the hotel for the truth. And all we did was talk about this wonderful pencil. The benefit entertainment takes place tomorrow night. It will be very impromptu. No plans have been made. And none will be. And now, if you will kindly excuse me, I will get my hat and coat and we shall return to your hotel. I wish to have words with Mr. Pat Bryant. Don't you think he's wonderful, Sue? How do you like that rainbow pencil? I know. Oh, never mind trying to talk. Here, write something on this pad of paper. Now, let's see what you've written. <laughs> well, I can't read this. It's in Chinese. Look, try it again and write my name. You know how to do that. I know you do. Now, go ahead. That's right. A P. R-I-L. You know, Steve, you could write code messages and nobody could ever imitate them because nobody else has a color pencil just like this. Say, maybe we ought to call this Big Steve Code Pencil. And you oh, can... child, I'm sorry, but it is rather late. I will walk back to the hotel with you. We shall talk to Mr. Ryan. All right. Come along, Sue. I don't know much about walking. Yes, you're quite right, Miss Kane. Ever since the outbreak of the war in China over four years ago, I have been unable to pursue my studies of magic. I have devoted all my time to our fight against the invader. But aren't you afraid that something will happen to you, Dr. Fu Ling? No, I am an old man. My time is short. If I can give the few remaining years of my life to my country, I am happy to do so. Well, I think there's lots of different magic that can be used against the enemy. The greatest magic of all, Miss Kane, is the magic of the Chinese people themselves. They will never be defeated. They may not be the best fighters in the world. They may die by the hundreds, by thousands. But China itself will live forever. And that is something the invaders have not been able to understand. Oh, but that, you, you are young. I know the sort of talk is not interesting too much so to young people. Uh, but come, I know a shortcut which will lead us directly to the hotel. 
The three of us will get there a lot sooner. But for once, Dr. Fu Lane was wrong. As he and April and Big Stoop entered a narrow, darkened alley leading to the hotel, there was a sudden scuffle. Several silent figures surrounded our friends. They made no outcry, there was no chance to get in the room. It all happened so swiftly that Big Stoop, for all his immense strength and courage, was unable to do anything. He suddenly discovered himself alone. April and the elderly magician had vanished. Big Stoop rushed to the hotel. I'll get it. Hello? Yes? What, a big fellow? Ask me if his name is Stoop. What's the trouble? The clerk in the lobby said a giant just came in. It is? All right, send him up. Have Big Stoop, all right. Say, hey, dragon lady, you'd better get out of the way. I don't know what Big Stoop wants, but you better not get his hands on you. Yeah, that's so. You can go into that other room and wait. Very well, I shall go in there. But I may leave this hotel also. We shall meet again, and very soon, Mr. Ryan. Now, what is all this about Big Stoop? Is neighbor with him? I don't know. I don't know what's happened. Well, what could have happened? Wait, uh, here comes somebody along the corridor now. Well, come in, Stoop. What's happened? Where's he? Well, now, how can he answer all that? He can't talk. Nobody can write. Mm. Here, Stoop, over here on the desk. Pass on paper. Now, now tell us what's happened. Well, look here, Pat. And look at that pencil he's using. I think it's a pencil. I've never seen anything like it. Well, what are you talking about? Look here, he, he's writing a message. It's, it's in all the colors of the rainbow. Well, what do you know about that? Did you ever see a pencil like that before? Red, yellow, green, blue, and a lot of other colors. Oh. Yeah, but what's he writing? Can you make out? Well, let me see, Stu. Yeah, look here. Look what he's written. April gone, fooling gone. Well, what does it mean? Uh, listen, big Stu. Stu, were they taken away, kidnapped? He nods yet. Well, that's not very much information. Here, here, Stu. Sit down and write answers to my question. Well, what could have happened? Listen, Pat. Even though the dragon lady was up here in this room all the time, do you think she had anything to do with the disappearance of April and Fu Ling? Yes, perhaps the dragon lady did have something to do with the abduction of April and Dr. Fu Ling. And we'll find out about that tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll meet another new and interesting character in this amazing adventure. The girl known as Who She. I'll tell you more about this in just a moment. For a drink you really go for, a drink that tastes well, makes you feel full of whim and wigger, ask Mother to get Libby's tomato juice. This grand and glorious juice of prized tomatoes gives you lots of vitamins. Vitamins A, B1, C, and G. And boy, oh boy, does it taste marvelous. Ask your mother, please, to get some Libby's tomato juice tomorrow, sure. Do you want to help win the war? Why, of course you do. Then buy United States defense bonds and cents. Remember, you can get a stamp for just ten cents. Now, of course, if the great magician has vanished along with April King, this may delay the benefit performance, which has been planned for tomorrow. However, I believe that in some way, Big Stoop, as well as the amazing color pencil, will play a part in finding them. There's so many things in store for you in tomorrow's transcribed adventure, you'll simply have to be on hand yourself for the big event. So remember the radio time.